Hey everybody! Today I'm going to take apart these patio furniture cushions so that I can find out what's inside and so that I can use the fabrics to make templates. I will actually use the fabrics as templates for making new covers for this patio furniture. Recovering your patio cushions is actually a lot easier than it might seem. One of the benefits of taking them apart, like I'm going to do today, is that number one, you'll see how they are made. You'll see that it's usually a half inch seam allowance. It's usually really big stitches. The seam allowances aren't always perfect like we do in quilting. So you'll see that it's an easy project that you can handle. You'll also be able to see what is actually inside. And we can determine if I need to go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's and find new foam or padding or whatever it is inside if I need to buy new materials to go inside or if the materials that are already inside my cushions are still in good shape then I can just make new covers. There are other ways to make templates for making patio cushions like for example I could take this cushion and I could trace around it and that would give me the shape of this front of the cushion and then I could measure the gusset here and I just add seam allowances to all of this and I could make this entire cushion just by taking measurements but for today since I already want to get inside and see what's in it see how it's made and since the way this cushion is made the fabric wraps around like this and I know that I want to make four of these because I have four chairs that these for these cushions I just want to take it apart usually it's pretty easy because they're sewn with such big stitches now the tools that I have here are a pair of scissors in case I need it, a little pair of scissors, and also my surgical seam ripper, which is really my secret weapon for taking anything apart. I probably fix a lot more mistakes than I normally would because I have my surgical seam ripper and I don't mind unpicking. So I also have a notebook here with a pencil so that if I want to jot down any measurements or any notes as I go, any sewing, techniques that I see inside this and I want to just jot it down I can for when I'm putting it back together. So this cushion actually has a zipper so I'll just start by unzipping. It's an old zipper so it's getting stuck. I got such a great deal on this patio furniture because the cushions were so old. The furniture is in great shape like perfect shape but the cushions were so old and yucky that I got a great deal so the zipper is stuck here and I'm not gonna worry about that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start deconstructing off here let's look at the cushion first by the way so we have a curved back of the cushion the front of the cushion has fabric that wraps around here and then we have a gusset here before it reaches a zipper pa zipper panel a zipper panel and a gusset so when I make this, I'm going to need six, five pieces. I'm going to need this piece that goes around here, my two side gusset panels. And then when you make a zipper panel like this, and I'll show you when I'm sewing it together, you have one piece here and one piece here. So I'll have one, two, three, four, five pieces for this particular cushion. So because the zipper got stuck here, I'm just going to turn this zipper panel a little bit so I can expose the seam and as I suspected this looks like a half inch seam allowance maybe it is five eighths so that's just good to know for when I sew my pieces back together so I'm just going to start by picking out a couple of the stitches you might hear my dog barking downstairs Okay, so I've exposed a little hole here, and now I can just cut the stitches, spread the hole open, and cut the stitches as I go. I did put a new blade in my surgical seam ripper before I got started. Since I know that I'm not going to sew this back together, I'm going to throw away these pieces after I'm done. I'm not too concerned if I accidentally put a hole in them. I can also just rip the stitches a little bit 
I don't want to rip too much because I don't want to distort the shape of these pieces too much because they are actually going to be my template. So here I got this part down open until I reached this place where the side gusset and the zipper panel come together. So I'm just going to start working on this seam right here. Because I know once I get this seam done, I can open it up and I can take out this pad that's inside and see what it's made of. I'm hoping that maybe some of the pads are okay and I can just use them again. But even if I can't, generally, and I can already see, these are a foam pad. You can buy this at the craft store and it's wrapped with polyester batting. And you can use the same high left loft polyester batting that you might use for a quilt. This is coming apart really easily now here, this whole side seam, once I had it going. Okay, so I got that side seam between my zipper panel, my side gusset open. This is just right out. So you see here, like I said, this is just a piece of foam. I could measure it. It looks like it's about four inches thick and then it is wrapped with polyester batting. Wrapped around the sides. So I'm just going to keep this. This looks to me to be in good enough shape to reuse and I'll just put it inside my new cover. But if I were going to buy more, I would just go to the craft store and I would buy some four inch foam. I could place this right on it or I could take the batting off first, trace around it, and then you can use just like a bread knife. Um, if you have some kind of a band saw in your garage, you could use that. But it doesn't matter that these edges are super smooth because these are meant to fit tightly in the covers. So in the past, I've just used a bread knife to like saw, I'll trace the shape on the foam and just saw around it. So, so this is good. I'm going to keep this and I'm going to finish taking apart this cover so that I can use the fabric for my templates. So I have got this deconstructed down to these main parts. I have my oval shape that will be the body of the cushion. And then I have my two gusset pieces. They're a little bit torn, but I know that if I iron these, then I can measure them and I will know exactly what size to cut my rectangles to go on the sides of my cushion. And then here is my zipper panel. Now, normally I wouldn't deconstruct this any further because this, I see this is constructed the way most upholstery zipper panels are. And I'll deconstruct it now for you so I can show you, but it's actually a really easy and clever and fast way to make a zipper panel. So if this was normal for me, I would just measure it and it is the same width as these, I know. So I would just measure it. I can actually see here, it's a little warped and out of shape, but it is probably, if it wasn't stretched out, it would probably be 23 inches long. And then the width of this is five inches, including the seam allowances. So normally I would just construct a zipper panel that is 23 inches long and five inches wide and then I'll sew it in. But I'm going to take one of the sides off here so I can show you the clever way that they make them. So this is the most common way that upholstery makers make a zipper panel is they will just cut a piece of fabric that is twice as wide as they want it to be finished and fold it in half and sew it to the zipper. So that means that inside the zipper 
right where you're most likely to see it if you open up your cushion you don't have any raw edges there are raw edges these aren't surged generally people don't surge um, upholstery as a home sewist I might go ahead and surge all the edges of my pieces after I cut them out and then when I sew them together all the edges will already be finished this is still just a little sewn together and I don't want to bother I'm just going to cut off the end just so I can show you so we've got our panel which this is cut short but it should be as long as you want it to be as long as your zipper panel is going to be and this is Again, this one is five inches wide, so they took a five inch wide panel, they folded it in half, and then they just sewed it, they placed the folded edge here right on the middle of the zipper, and generally in the upholstery factories they don't pin, but if I was doing it I might pin it. And so you place this right along the center of the zipper, which, oh there we go. So you place this right along the center of the zipper and then you sew it about a half inch away from the center and because you've got this nice wide upholstery zipper it makes a little flap here to cover the zipper and you just sew this one down half inch away and then you've got an exact same panel on the other side that I cut five inches wide folded in half pressed and also the other side on and easy peasy there's my panel and because these were each five inches folded in half and pressed and I brought the folds to meet at the center, this finished piece should be five inches wide. And then when I sew it into my cushion with a half inch seam allowance, then my cushion has a four inch wide gusset all the way around. So that's the way these are made. Now, this is a nice wide upholstery zipper and you can buy these online. Uh, personally, I really like the quality and the width of the By Annie Zipper by the Yard, and I already have a ton of them that I use for my bags, and they come in awesome colors. So since I already bought some Sunbrella fabric online, I'm waiting for it to come. I have zippers the same color. That's what I plan to use, but you can buy upholstery zippers also. So that is this one i have my pieces i'm going to save this piece to use as my pattern template of course i'll iron it so that all of these seam allowances are flat for these pieces i'm just gonna iron one and measure it and then i'll measure this make a note of it and then i have all these pieces to sew back together and i saw exactly how they sewed it so um, in my next video, I'll show you a little bit how to sew them together, but if you deconstructed this, you're going to know how to sew it back together. That's one great reason to deconstruct your cushions. So this next one I wanted to show you is another seat cushion. This seat cushion goes on the rocking chair that comes in this set, and it is the exact same shape. It's bigger, but it's the exact same shape as this cushion that I just deconstructed. So I won't take it apart right now. But just so you know, you saw exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to deconstruct it. I don't have to take apart the zipper panel, but I'll just take it down to get my templates and measurements for the rest of the cushions. So this here is the top piece from that rocking chair cushion. And looking at this, it also has a zipper on the bottom. The zipper's not stuck. Looking at this, I have got just two pieces. I've got one curved shape here, one on the front and the back, and then I have four covered buttons on each side that are connected to each other to make these nice tufts. So this is also a really simple cushion to make. Now one reason why I want to take it apart is because I've got these boxed corners here, and so by taking it apart I will have a perfect pattern template for this curved shape here and for these boxed corners. Now I could measure it and try and do it that way, but why bother when it's easy to take it apart? So look, this one is just full of stuffing. And the stuffing actually appears to be in pretty good shape. So looking at it, I've got stuffing and then around the stuffing, is a layer of the polyester batting 
and this polyester batting is here because sometimes when we have just stuffing you might have made stuffed animals and notice that when you just have stuffing you it might your stuffed animal or your cushion or pillow might appear kind of lumpy and so if you have a layer of batting next to the fabric it just smooths everything out so I've got quite a bit of this out and now I'm going to go ahead and cut the ties that hold the buttons together so this is pretty limp I can pull on the tie here and take off one of the buttons covered buttons are easy to find at the sewing store and you can just cover it in your favorite fabric I am not worried here about I might accidentally get a hole in the fabric with my scissors uh, I actually did that there but I'm not too worried about that here okay so I took the four buttons on the front off and now the buttons on the back since they were connected to the buttons on the front are kind of embedded in the fabric but they should just pop off this one wants to be stuck okay so my buttons are off and I can keep taking out this stuffing and you know what this stuffing is pretty good shape uh, it's not stinky still pretty fluffy I probably want to put more stuffing in this cushion but I can reuse all of this So I'm just going to go get a kitchen trash bag and I will put all of this in the kitchen trash bag so I can hold on to it until I make my new cushion cover. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and unpick this the way that you saw me unpick the other cushion. Okay, I have one side completely off. As you can see, the hardest part or the most time consuming part to unpick were the corners and that was because, because of these boxed corners, there were a few different layers of stitching. And even this one, I'll have to completely finish picking out a few stitches in the boxed corner so that this will lay flat. But as you see here, I did not take off the zipper tape. I just pulled off the little zipper pull. So that is something I can do later. I can see that it is folded over about three quarters of an inch. And then the fold is sewn onto the zipper tape with the fold right down the middle of the zipper. So that is something that I could do. I could, when I'm cutting this out, just cut my edge right here three quarter inch past the zipper or I can just take the time to remove this zipper and it will probably actually come off very easily because again it's sewn with big stitches there's only one layer of thread here and this will come right off and then I have my pattern template that's just perfect here so I'll cut two of these and I'll cut a zipper by the yard that's this long. I'll fold this part over by three quarters of an inch and I will sew these to my zipper. Then I can just place my two pieces right sides together, sew around except for my little cutout corner here and then I'll make my box corners and it will be sewn. So this is actually really quick. And then here are, this is interesting, so it looks like they cut their batting, their polyester batting, in this shape. Uh, if this was in terrible condition, I might use this as a template to cut a new one, but this actually isn't in that bad a shape. It doesn't smell bad. It's just fine. So it looks like they made this and then folded it and put it inside the sewn 
cover and then they once it was all flattened out inside they stuffed it with that whole bag of stuffing there and then zip it up sew on your covered buttons and this cushion's done so i'm just going to save this the only thing that i might add is when i stuff this all back together i will probably add more stuffing and another fun thing to add are we now have foam chips and those foam chips make great stuffing and they stay cushy really well. So I probably stuff in some of those along with the rest of the stuffing. So that was the chair back. Now the last thing I have is a really huge chair back and chair seat that go with a huge double chaise. So I'm not going to unpick these. I'm just going to show you how they are made and then of course I am going to unpick them all the way and use these big pieces as my pattern templates. I could just measure but once again I have boxed corners here and I have curved edges here at the top that you know I just want to make sure that I make the same cushion. Of course patio furniture is so casual that if you don't make the exact same cushion if your cushions have square corners here instead of this curve, say you just want to measure it really carefully with the tape measure, this is just two pieces of front and a back. We already saw that something like this is just filled with stuffing with batting wrapped around it. You could really just measure, of course you want to take it apart enough to take out your batting and your stuffing, you could just cut it open and reuse the batting that's inside if it's still good. Now, so this is going to be sewn like the other cover, the other front cover is sewn, except this has this top little part right here for your head. So the way you would do that is after the cover is completely sewn, and one more difference with this one is this one has ties. So I'll just have to make some easy ties. They look like they're about half inch wide total and sew them in the side seams. But the difference is once this is cover is done like a bag, I'll want to take a ch tailor's chalk or a fabric pen and I want to draw a line that's across the top and I'll measure this. This looks like it's about 10 inches. So I'll measure this and I'll draw that line 10 inches down from the top. Then I will stuff this head part and you don't need to stuff it super full, just stuff it moderately full and then pin along your line and sew along your line. It's really not that hard. So you've sewn along your line and then the rest of this you'll just stuff the same way that we did that other cushion back. It's got two covered buttons that I'll put on for tufts and not that hard, right? And then this last piece which is the huge, huge bottom cushion for that chaise it looks to me, I'm going to unpick it, but it looks to me like I've got a front piece that is rectangular. I could just measure it. Then I've got a gusset piece that goes all the way around three sides. It looks to me like it's about four inches wide. And then I've got my zipper panel here, which would be the same four inches wide. And I've got ties at the bottom, two ties. Now one thing that I really need to check is I need to check what's inside and what condition it is. So here I've got a big piece of foam that is wrapped with batting. So I'm not very surprised. It looks like, this is interesting. With their big industrial sewing machines, they just sewed right through the batting and the foam because it is all connected. Now that is not something that I am going to be able to do with my home sewing machine. So what I will do is I will construct this like one big huge bag or pillowcase that are the same rectangular dimensions with a four inch gusset and a four inch zipper panel on this side. And then I'm going to, I don't think I'll reuse this. I'll go to my fabric and craft store and I will buy a piece of foam that is this size and I'll buy some polyester batting and I'll wrap it around my foam. 
maybe I'll make it a little bit like an inch smaller than this size so that I can stuff it down in and then pin along the line that I would have marked and then I'll sew the line and then I'll do the same thing again. I'll have another one, I'll make three total. I'll stuff it in, pin along the line and sew and then I'll put my last one in. And something that might be really interesting is if I find cushions or pillows or something that is this size exactly, I could totally use it, especially if it's a foam pillow. I don't know if I'd find that. But just something to think about. You don't necessarily have to make your patio cushions exactly the same. They don't have to have exactly the same materials inside. You can experiment, um, but this foam is really great. The reason why everybody uses foam is because it's not that expensive and because it's cushy and it's comfortable to sit on. So I hope that was helpful showing how to take apart your patio furniture covers. Really this project is not that hard and even though you don't necessarily have to take them apart, I totally recommend doing it at least for the first few ones so you see what's inside. You see that it's no mystery. It is things that you can get at your craft store and put together yourself. And then once you see how it's sewn, you see that they just have these big half inch seam allowances and it's not super complicated. It's something that you can totally do on your own. So in part two of this video, I'll show you a little bit about how I sew my cushions together and what they look like at the end. Please take a look at my website, So Can She, for lots more sewing ideas and inspiration, especially quilting. And please subscribe to my channel to see all my sewing ideas. Have a great day.